Have you ever wondered if that water filter on your countertop you've been using for years is actually doing its job? Or if there's something even better out there? Reverse osmosis is often hailed as the gold standard of drinking water treatment, but what makes it so different from other types of filters? If you're overwhelmed by the multitude of water filter options or confused by over-the-top promises from manufacturers, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to talk about the exact differences between reverse osmosis osmosis and other types of water filters so you can get the best solution for your drinking water needs. So I quickly want to explain what water filtration and reverse osmosis are before getting into the key differences specifically. Water filtration is a process that uses a filter to reduce or remove specific contaminants from water. When water is filtered, contaminants like chlorine, lead, or sediment are trapped and prevented from passing through. The effectiveness of a water filter depends on its design, the type of media inside, and how many different stages of filtration it uses. Some filters physically block particles based on their size, while others use chemical processes to adsorb contaminants or exchange ions. You can find filters for everything from pitchers and shower heads to larger whole house systems that filter the water for every tap in your home. Now, reverse osmosis takes this treatment a step further. It combines multiple filters like carbon and sediment filters with a semi-permeable membrane to remove up to 99.9% .9 of total dissolved solids. Water is forced through the RO membrane under pressure, leaving behind contaminants which are then flushed away as wastewater. So now that we know what reverse osmosis and water filtration are, let's dive into the key differences that set these water treatment methods apart. First up is the type of barrier or process that they use to separate contaminants from your water. A reverse osmosis system relies on that semi-permeable membrane, like I mentioned, which consists of super thin layers with incredibly tiny pores as small as 0.0001 microns that are small enough to block even dissolved salts and metal ions. The pores are so small that only water molecules pass through while nearly everything else is rejected. On the other hand, water filters use other types of barriers like ceramic shells, carbon block, cotton or cellulose, or processes like ion exchange or redox. These barriers work differently depending on the filter type. Physical filtration blocks larger particles, carbon traps contaminants through adsorption, while ion exchange swaps unwanted potentially harmful ions for neutral or beneficial ones. Here's the critical distinction. In a water filter, contaminants are either caught or held or swapped in the filter media as the water flows through. But with reverse osmosis, water is forced against the membrane under pressure and rejected contaminants are flushed away as wastewater. On a similar note, let's talk about what contaminants each type of system can actually remove from your water. Reverse osmosis is about as close to pure water as you can get. It removes virtually everything from from suspended solids and bacteria to dissolved salts, viruses, and heavy metal ions. The only things that might sneak through are some organic compounds and dissolved gases, but these are addressed by before and after carbon filters. Water filters, on the other hand, target specific contaminants based on their design and the media they use. Sediment filters physically block suspended particles like sand and rust. Activated carbon filters are great for organic chemicals, bad tastes and odors, and KDF filters tackle heavy metals like lead, mercury, and chromium. Now, these are just a couple of examples, but there are multitudes of different water filter media used to target different water issues. The more complex the filter, like a multi-stage system that combines different types of filter media, the broader range of contaminants it can reduce. But even the most advanced water filter won't match the near complete purification of a reverse osmosis system. So the key here is that if you are looking for targeted treatment, a water filter might be all that you need. But if you want the cleanest water possible for your drinking and cooking water, then reverse osmosis is the way to go. That said, RO is not perfect and has a number of setbacks to be aware of. As I mentioned, reverse osmosis doesn't discriminate and it greatly reduces or removes nearly everything, including healthy minerals like calcium and magnesium. While this results in exceptionally pure water, it typically lowers the pH and can result in a flat type of taste that some people might notice. On the other hand, water filters are generally unable to remove minerals. However, there are some exceptions, 
For example, if a filter uses a cation exchange resin, it might exchange calcium and magnesium, along with heavy metals like lead and copper, for sodium ions. In terms of cost, reverse osmosis systems can be a significant investment. For a basic point of use system, you're looking at spending at least a couple hundred dollars. If you want smart features, remineralization, or extras like instant hot water, the price climbs even higher. In contrast, water filters can be much more budget friendly. You can pick up a water filter pitcher for less than 50 bucks or opt for a countertop or faucet mounted filter without breaking the bank. Another major difference between reverse osmosis and water filters is water pressure and flow rate. Reverse osmosis systems require high water pressure in order to operate properly, at least 40 PSI, although 60 is ideal. If your water pressure falls short, some RO systems come with a built-in pump to boost it, ensuring water can pass through the ultra-tight membrane without wasting a ton of water in the process. RO systems offer the speed and convenience of water on demand. Water filters, on the other hand, are a bit more flexible. For under sink systems, your existing water pressure is usually sufficient to push water through the filter cartridges. But here's where things get interesting, and that's that not all water filters rely on water pressure. Some countertop filters and water filter pitchers actually use the force of gravity to pull water through the filter. While these options are slower, they don't require a connection to the water line, making them a low pressure, easy to use solution. So if you're comparing these systems, think about how water pressure and your patience for slower flow rates fits into your household's needs. Something else you're gonna wanna check when choosing between reverse osmosis and water filtration is their installation and maintenance requirements. Generally, RO systems are more difficult to install than water filters. They come with a dedicated faucet and need to be connected to your drain line. And if it's a tank-based system, you'll also need space for a storage tank. Countertop reverse osmosis systems are the exception though. These are plug and play units that don't require complex or invasive installation, but they do need a bit more more hands-on maintenance, specifically filling and emptying their water tanks. Speaking of maintenance, each filter stage in an RO system has its own replacement schedule, which can typically range from six months to two years. While this might sound like a hassle, I've found that the ongoing maintenance costs for reverse osmosis systems are actually quite affordable. Now, water filters, on the other hand, are typically simpler and easier to install and use. Even for more advanced undersink systems, you typically won't need to deal with a separate faucet, and they don't need a drain line, which makes the setup quicker and easier. As for maintenance, most filtration systems have just one or two filters to replace, although interestingly, they're not always cheaper to maintain compared to RO systems. Now, water waste is another key difference between reverse osmosis and water filters, and it's something you'll only encounter with RO systems. The reverse osmosis process itself inherently wastes water. This is because the system flushes away contaminants that are rejected by the membrane. However, the good news is that RO technology has come a long way in reducing waste. In the past, it was common for RO systems to waste up to four gallons of water just to purify one. But today, many modern Modern RO systems are far more efficient, wasting as little as one gallon for every two or three gallons purified. On the flip side, water filters don't waste any water, so this is definitely something to consider when thinking about reverse osmosis versus filtration for your specific needs. So knowing their differences is one thing, but which do I actually recommend for most folks? You might be expecting me to tell you that reverse osmosis is the clear winner, it's the most effective system and offers the broadest range of contaminant reduction. And yes, if you're looking for the best protection against a wide range of contaminants, reverse osmosis is hard to beat. But that doesn't mean it's always the right fit for everyone. If you're on a tight budget or the downsides of reverse osmosis, like water waste or mineral loss are a deal breaker, then a water filter might be the better choice for you. Many filters today are surprisingly effective at reducing a range of contaminants without the high price tag or maintenance hassle of an RO system. System. Even a simple water filter pitcher can provide significant contaminant reduction for everyday needs, especially when it uses a blend of filtration media. 
When deciding between the two, here are the key things to consider. First and foremost, it's vital to know what contaminants are actually in your water, and more importantly, what water treatment technologies are capable of dealing with them. Of course, your budget also comes into play, but it's important to think about not only the upfront cost, but also the cost of replacing filters over time. And your installation and maintenance preferences are also important. RO systems require more complex setup and upkeep, while water filters are generally easier to install and maintain. The best place to start is by testing your water. Knowing what's actually in it will help you choose the right treatment solution. And if you're on city water, you can also refer to your water company's consumer confidence report as a quick and easy way to get an idea of what might be in your water. Now, if you wanna learn exactly how to leverage data to identify the right water filter or reverse osmosis system for your needs, stick around and watch the next video where I walk you through that process from beginning till end and talk about key considerations to be aware of. Click or tap to watch now.